Our right, tournament today is Bekzad Uzmanov, who fights Justin Wetzel at LFA 195 in the headliner on October 25th. So, Bekzad, I want to start by talking about your time on The Ultimate Fighter. We're a little bit removed from that. You are getting your first fight since being in the house. But I want to know kind of your take on it all. What was your experience like in the, the <laughs> house? And what's it like now that, you know, you're you're looking back at that season in, in the rearview mirror? Awesome. First, I want to say what's up, everyone. Hello to everybody. And of course, hello to Daniel. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Yeah, answering for the to your question, um, experience overall in the top and in the, the high level fighters um, from the UFC uh, was like, you know, like, wow. I learned so much and then I saw so much. And of course there was Dana and then the um, other like, um, like a lot of people like who have a name, who has name and from the UFC. And of course I was like uh, competing over there. Now I have a lot of friends around the world and, uh, and overall I learned so much from Alexa and it was like huge experience for me. And now I'm ready to show to everybody that that skills what I get from, <laughs> from them in uh, LFA soon. So yeah, pretty much I'm, I'm ready and then I'm, I'm ready to show a good fight. Well, that's awesome to hear. Now I know they talked about you being a barista on there. After going back to work, did you get noticed all the time? Was there tons of people recognizing you after that? Oh, oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. A lot of people come in, most likely like you know friends, and like, what's up, dude? I'm like, hey, okay, <laughs> you know. And then the yeah, and then the, from Albuquerque, a lot of people like, hey, I I saw you on the TV, right? Um, looks like you're very similar, familiar. I'm like, yeah, sorry, yeah, it was me. <laughs> well, that's, um, that, yeah, that, that's great though. You know, the, 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 you got a whole new fandom there in addition to uh to you know all that you already had now i wanted to ask too about the fight on the series because that fight with gigamontes rigamonka was mm -hmm. seen as maybe the best fight on the whole series finale included dana white giving standing ovations during the yeah. fight I i'm wondering did he talk to you after the fight about how he felt about it did you get a chance to chat with him Yes, brother, hundred percent. We was talking after the fight, and then the yeah, I got a bonus like a uh, fight of the season. But thing is, um, they I I was expecting to you know get chance uh, after the season they will like call me, but my my management and of course uh, my coaches uh, was talking with them. They told to us like you have to show some fight somewhere else. And then most likely we will we'll invite you. So now I have opportunity to show my skills in LFA and then we'll see how it will go. But other than that, he's a nice guy. And then he told me, yeah, like I did good fight and then the, sent it to me like a good check for my, for a fight of the season. And yeah, I was uh, with him talking and I did some good pictures with him. And and overall, uh, you are still really like amazing organization who really care about fighters. I'm like, whoa, that's the high level, you know, like a huge company under like a big umbrella, you know. So, and yeah, that was fun. They've um, talking with him, of course, with other um, names uh, in the UFC. Well, that's awesome to hear. Now, <laughs> I, I got to ask too, you know, is is that sort of why you wound up fighting for LFA next? Is is It is the logical sort of feeder to the that UFC. Did you see them as like kind of one of the options you kind of had to go to? I think you're right. Um, you because always UFC watching LFA, you know, like very like carefully, and they. I was expecting they will like call me UFC like short notice or something like that because I was cutting my weight and then the staying like being ready, you know, if something will come, maybe like I don't know something like that, I will just jump immediately. So now we was carefully looking for other organization what we can do. I because after the fight I got like a lot of like offers from different organizations. But at some point my management, of course, and then my coaches told me like, hey, we have this one for you and then we'll be the best for you. And I said, perfect, let's do it. I like that. I like that. Now, yeah. also, obviously, you're getting a chance to fight at Bantamweight, which is really where you belong. And I, I know you've even gone lower than that, right? You've gone to flyweight before. D did you yeah. feel like that? that's also sort of what you're proving here is that, you know, obviously you could hang with those featherweights, but they want to see you dominate a, a Bantamweight, correct? Um, yeah, that's the, you know, I had two options, brother Daniel. So there was like 125 and 135, and I'm already in my weight now and what for 140 135 sorry i need to cut around like 
five or six pounds and I'm, I'm ready. Um, but our next goal in the UFC, I want to compete in a flyweight division where I can use all my abilities, you know, all my skills, because for 35 looks like in UFC, I'm a little small, but this time I'm going to show 135. But overall, my opinion like that, Daniel, it's not really, really, really important, like two divisions or one division is like, you know, different between, but I think... Um, how you will you know manage that fight and how you will make a plan against like that fighter before you will fight because in the cage they just just you and him of course you have a referee if something will happen they will stop you it exactly same thing happened if um tough i was fighting the guys like really like bigger than me twice i just go check my weight and then there was some huge um thing with scale in the top and it was yeah i think um, 135 this time, and then after that, we'll see um, 125 for me. So, yeah. I like that a <laughs> lot. Now, I also did want to ask you about some of your extracurriculars, not just the barista stuff, but I know you've been working on becoming a manager yourself. You're talking about management decisions and stuff like that. That's something you're looking to get into. Is that new for you? Have you always sort of had that as a, a goal in your life? <laughs> Uh, most likely I will turn my company now what I have for bigger I will you know explore and then sign more fighters but now um, I have time for um, management with who I'm working now uh, at the Jackson Wing MMA you know in our facility we have a management company and I'm working with them and I'm helping you know like for contracts like fighting uh, fighters uh, um, I like helping for them find fighters from overseas, you know, like from Asia and Russia or like uh, small countries because I can speak Russian in other languages. And other than that, we'll see how it will go uh, next, you know, like five, maybe years, maybe a little bit less. But overall, my bigger goals, um, you know, like explore that management area, you know, and run well my own company. So we'll see how it will go. I like that. I like that. All right. Well, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's talk about the fight side of things again. So, you know, you mentioned knowing that LFA is kind of a good place because the UFC's got eyes on it. When they yeah. came to you with the fight offer and said, you know, 135 pounds is what you decided on. But they also said they wanted you in a main event. Was it a surprise that they wanted you in a main <laughs> event? Were you excited um, about it? I think I think it was like huge opportunity. And then, of course, I want to say thank you so much for LFA for giving me this opportunity i think they was looking for my fight and of course they um you know was looking for um something big uh for me and of course for my phone and then uh, um i love how they put us in main event and and we'll we'll show a good fight i think for sure for sure now let's talk about your opponent too you know you're a guy who i know is is got eyes on other people you your good view of you know your opponents Justin Wetzel, what were your first thoughts on him when you got a chance to watch the film? First, uh, I got that uh, message from my uh, manager. And uh, and after that, we was looking at my coach Wink uh, from Jackson Wink, um, what he can do, what we're expecting. And in the, we have some good ideas what we can do against him. Um, I, will, I will maybe talk with you after the fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, Daniel... Um, we didn't see something like, you know, incredible, like, whoa, like huge high level fighter or something like that. But we noticed that he do have something we have to like careful and just, you know, work for our good areas and then just show good fight and win this fight. And then next step we'll see. All right. Well, we're looking forward yeah. to that. Now, I, I usually like to end these things with a prediction, but you seem like you're <laughs> playing things tight to the best. But I'll ask anyway. Do you have a prediction for how this ends at LFA 195 on October 25th? <laughs> I think for you, for Daniel, bro, I will, for everybody, I think just turn, it, turn on your um, UFC fight pass and in the Chon TV and just enjoy this fight. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I <you're>... think we'll, <laughs> we'll, see, we'll show something cool. <laughs> All right. Well, you heard it here first, folks. This has been Big Zod Uzmanov who <laughs> fight. Justin Wetzel, that fight once again, LFA 195, and it takes place on October 25th. Bexod, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much for everybody who will watch and listen this um, video and overall interview. And yeah, good luck for everyone.